Okay, so a probability course would not be complete unless there were examples given to gambling. It's sort of a tradition. So we're going to talk about the game of poker, which is a probabilistic game. And we're going to see, we're going to calculate the probabilities of getting certain hands in poker. Now, if you're not familiar with poker, um, it is a game played with a deck of cards. There are 52 cards in a deck and four suits. So this is showing the diamond suit. This picture right here is showing the diamonds. But there's also the exact same cards in hearts, spades, and clubs. Um, each suit has 13, car number, uh, 13 cards. We number between 2 to 10. right? And then we have jack, queen, king, and ace. So 13 cards. And if you have 13 times the four suite suits, then you're going to get 52 cards total. Um, there are many different ways of playing poker. I'm going to choose the easiest one to do probabilities off of. So we're going to choose get, be given five cards. And then we're going to try to form various patterns in the cards. You can't trade any cards in like you can in many versions of poker. There aren't any cards on the table. It's just very simple. You're given five cards out of your 52 card deck. And we're going to try to form patterns with them. So the first thing we're going to calculate is what the probability of drawing two pairs in a hand of poker. Now two pairs means I'm going to have two of one card. So in this example, let's do aces and two of another card, kings, and then one random card that does not belong to either of those sets. So eight, and this is the example I've showed there. Right, so we can't, this two of a kind is, or two pair is different than four of a kind. It's different from, if this were the same as the kings, that would be called a full house. We're sticking with the strict interpretation. Now, the best way to figure this out is to think of an algorithm to create this hand. So it's kind of a weird thing to say, but if you were um, able to pick your own cards and you wanted to pick a two pair, Right, how would you do it? Well, first, we're going to want to pick what the denominations are, right? So here I chose um, aces and kings. Um, we're going to have to pick two denominations for our two pair. Okay, and we're fi we'll figure out how many ways there are to do that later. Once we've figured out den our denominations, ace and king in this example, we have to choose, I'm going to look at the smaller denomination. In this case, I'm actually not sure if that's ace or king. I guess ace is sort of both a one and better than the king. Um, so we'll say whatever one is lower, you can pick. I want to choose two cards from it. Right, because for every number, so if I pick tens, there's going to be four tens, right? Because there's going to be one for each of these different suits. So there's going to be four tens, four aces, four kings, four fives, and so on. So I'm going to pick two cards from the smaller denomination. I'm then going to pick two cards from the bigger denomination. And so this would be like maybe I'm picking heart, ace of hearts, and ace of diamonds. And then I'm picking king of uh, spades. Let's see if I can draw this very well. And uh, king of clubs. Okay, very poor drawings, but you get the idea. Okay, so that's step three. We're going to choose choose two cards from the larger denomination. So we've now picked in our in our algorithm, we've chosen those cards. I still need to pick this last card. Right. So I'm going to choose one card left from those remaining. Excuse me, choose 
one card from the remaining um, denominations. Right, because I don't want to pick a king or an ace in my example, because then what I would have is three of one kind and two of another, which is called a full house, which is different from two pairs. So we don't want that. So we're going to pick one from one card from the remaining dominations. Remaining dominations. Okay, so let's think about how we're going to do this. This is my algorithm. Once I have done these steps, and I'm going to do each step, this step, and this step, and this step, and this step. So these are not cases. These are steps. And that means there's an and. I do step one, and I do step two, and I do step three, and I do step four. So that should tell you whether we use multiplication or addition. Once we do this, let's figure out how to do it. So to choose the two denominations for the two pairs, well, we said uh, that there were 13 denominations. So there's 13, and we're going to want to choose two of them. Right, and then choose two cards from the smaller denomination. Well, the smaller denomination is going to have there's me four cards possible, right? So if we chose, if say our smaller denomination were fives, there's going to be four different fives, and we want to pick two of them. So four choose two, and same for the larger denomination, four choose two, and then one card from the rest. Well, if you leave out um, the 13, so we pick two, so there's only the 13 minus two denominations left. Which is 11, right? And there's 11 times four cards per denomination. is going to give us 44. So there's 44 cards left that we can pick our last one from. 44, choose one. And this algorithm, if we work all these out and multiply them together, because we're doing all these steps, this isn't cases, this is steps. So each step is independent of the previous one. Uh, and we're going to do them all, so we multiply, we're going to get a number. So let's go to the next page for that. So as I said before, since these are steps in the process, um, in a process of independent steps, rather than distinct individual cases, we're going to use the multiplication rule. So if we figure this out, we had 13 choose 2 times 4 choose 2 times 4 choose 2 times 44, choose 1, and this is going to be 13 factorial over 2 factorial times 11 factorial times over 2 factorial times 2 factorial. It's going to be the same, 2 factorial times 2 factorial, 2 factorial. And then finally, 44 factorial divided by 1 factorial, which is just 1, and 43 factorial. And if you work all this out, you're going to get this is equal to 78 times 6 times 6 times 44. And you'll find that there are 123,552 ways to choose a full, a two pair. All right, that's what this is. This is not the probability of choosing a two pair. This is a really common mistake I see people do. They'll figure this out and they'll say, well, I'm done. I calculated it. There's the answer. But we haven't answered the question yet. We've just answered, we just answered part of the final answer. So we figured out how many ways there are to pick a two pair. Now we need to figure out what probability of grabbing that 
combination at one of these ways, are there? So we want to figure out the number of ways there are to total in total to, to draw five cards randomly out of 52. So this is going to be 52 choose 5, which is going to equal 52 factorial 5 factorial times 52 minus 5 factorial. And if you work this out, you're going to get 2,598,000,000 ways, uh, 98, ways of, drawing, of drawing five cards. Okay, we're finally ready to calculate this probability. So, we want to know if we randomly drive five cards, how likely is it that we'll get two pair? So, for this, we're going to use the equally likely probability formula from the very first video. And we're going to have, this is the size of the event divided by the sample size of the sample space. In this case, the size of our event was on this page. And it's going to be 123,552. And the size of the sample space, we calculated right there. It's going to be 2,598,960. And this works out to approximately 4.75% because it needs a little bit of rounding. Okay, so if you have a deck of cards and you want to randomly draw five, there's a 4%, 4.75% chance, almost a 5% chance that you'll get two pair. And what's interesting is this is how if you were to go... Um, to a gambling facility where they have video poker, this is how they figure out the amount to pay you if you win. So say you get two pair, well they figure out how likely it is, well it's almost 5%, you have almost 5% chance of getting it, and so they'll offer you say 4% of the money you put into the game. So that's why they say the house always wins, it's because they figure out these probabilities and yes you get money, but not as much as the probability of getting it would be, if that makes sense. Okay, so now I'd like you to, tr you to try one. Um, I'd like to figure out the probability of drawing four of a kind in a hand of poker. So why don't you pause this video and take a few minutes and try to work it out, and then come back and we'll go over it. Okay, so once again, I want to construct an algorithm of how I would draw a four of a kind in the game. So step one, I'm going to choose a denomination. And so let's say I'm going to pick um, sixes. So I'm going to have four sixes. And then some other random card, doesn't matter, maybe it's a, a two, right? So I'm going to pick a denomination to have my four out of, my four of a kind. And how many ways are there of doing that? Well, we said there's 13 denominations. We're going to choose one of them, and this works out to 13. There's 13 ways of doing that. Okay, the next thing is I don't need to pick how many from each denomination because I'm going to use the entire denomination, right? So this is going to, I'm going to have a hearts, I'm going to have a diamonds, I'm going to have a spades, and I'm going to have a clubs, right? Because that's the only way to get four of the same um, value. So the next step is I just need to pick what goes last. What's that last, uh, last card? So choose a card from those remaining. And it's going to be 
leaves me 48 left. All right, because we've chosen four. And so 52 minus four is gonna give us 48. We're gonna pick one. That's gonna equal 48, 48 ways of doing it. So there are 13 times 48 equals 624 ways of making four of a kind. But again, we're still not answering the question. The question was, what's the probability? So we need to do that on the next slide. I'm sorry, there is no next slide. Let's do it here. So we figured out we're gonna get 624 ways of making four of a kind. If we go back, we found this value um, of how many ways total there are to choose five cards randomly. So we're gonna divide by that. So that is 2,598,900 nine hundred and sixty so this works out to zero point zero two four percent chance and the less likely the probability of it occurring the more is usually it's usually worth in a game of gambling okay and you can figure out other hands you can calculate all these values for all sorts of different games of chance. As a last note, um, if you enjoy reading, there's a great book, it's a little older at this point, it was printed in 1999, but it was called The Predictors. And it's um, by Thomas A. Bass. And it's a book how a bunch of physicists got together and tried to make money on the stock market and gambling by using probability and their understanding of probability theory. And one of the stories I enjoyed, I haven't read it for many years, um, but I remember there was a story about how they built small, com this was before, long before the days of cell phones, they built small computers into their shoes that would allow them by tapping their toes to calculate the probabilities of different hands uh, for different games at, in Vegas and they got caught because they were winning too much and they you know they studied the security videos and saw them moving their feet or something like that and um, you're not allowed to do that in Vegas because uh, the odds are all for the house and if you can calculate the prop the better you can calculate the probabilities in your head the better you'll do at gambling now that being said I don't gamble at all nor do I condone it um, it's a sickness for many people but I thought it was an interesting story that by understanding probability well, the people were able to do well in it. And um, so that's a book that I enjoyed.